Howdy, howdy. I've done a couple of posts on Enneagram where I've talked about how to determine if a particular card is a counterfeit or if it's a reprint or if it's basically not authentic. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about uh, how I actually determine those. So I've got a couple of examples here. One of these Mickey Mantles is the real deal and one of these Mickey Mantles is none. We're going to talk about several techniques that we can use to figure out which one is the real one and which one isn't. So I'm going to talk about some of the tools that we have. Uh, first tool that I have is a um, jeweler's loop. So this is a little loop here that has a couple of really uh, fine lenses on here. Uh, I have a couple of lenses here, one that goes to 30x, one that goes to 60x. I also have a little light here so we can uh, examine these cards up close. And what we're gonna be looking for is the printing dots, the way that the dots are on those uh, cards because they're not the same because printing techniques change over 50 years. And so we wanna talk a little bit about that. Second tool we're gonna to have at our disposal is a ultraviolet flashlight. So I have an ultraviolet flashlight here. And of course, when I turn it on, it's basically a flashlight, but we're gonna talk about how it deals differently with modern reprints as it does with more traditional cards. Now there's a couple of other tools that you're probably going to have around the house and we're gonna talk about those tools as well. So first thing I wanna talk about is just using a flashlight. So um, I've got a phone here and I'm going to talk about um, how to use the light on the phone to determine if a card is a fake or not. So I've turned on the light on my phone, it's pretty bright, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the card over it. Now, this is a real card. The light is on, but if I hold it over the cardstock, you'll notice no light actually seeps through. And uh, if you look at it really, really close, you might see there's a faint glow coming through there, not very much light at all. Um, if I were to take the counterfeit card and try and do the same thing with it, one of the things you notice is that that light just really shines through the card. Um, and you shouldn't have as much light going through. Um, this of course assumes that you have a, an authentic card of that year and of that brand. Um, so of course, that's probably gonna be one of the tools that you're gonna need as well, is to have an authentic card, a card that you know is real, that you can actually do a direct comparison with, because this card, which is real, doesn't have that same glow through or pass through as the card that isn't real. So that's gonna be our first test, is using light to determine it. So I'm gonna move this off and turn it off. The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this uh, UV flashlight. And I'm going to look at this UV flashlight because it reacts differently to the colors of the front of the card. And the idea is that more modern paper and more modern paints are going to have phosphors in it that glow, that react with the ultraviolet light. Again, I've told you that this first card here is my real card. And if I show my flashlight on it, you notice that it's just kind of bright. It's just like I'm shining a flashlight on it. If I switch over to this other card, you'll notice that, oh my goodness, it is just so much more intense. It's almost as if the paper is glowing radioactive. Notice this card, it's just like it's just a flashlight. It's a little bit brighter. This card over here, I mean, it's glowing. It literally is glowing. Same thing's gonna be true for the backs of these cards. So if I take a look at the backs of these cards, and I do that same test with the known good card. No issues, it's just kind of like a flashlight. When I go to the fake card, notice that these colors are just blindingly bright, just really difficult to, to even look at under the camera. So an ultraviolet light is really gonna be one of your friends when you're doing it. So I'm gonna have a link below in the description where you can actually see where to get one of these uh, ultraviolet lights on Amazon. So for the third thing that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to be talking about using this jeweler's loop, so I'm going to move my camera. So what I'm doing now is I've got my jeweler's loop on here, and the loop is just over the camera, and I'm actually going to zoom in to see some of the details on my card here. So if I zoom in, you'll notice you've got these series of dots here. Uh, now these dots uh, form a pattern of colors and they're slightly offset. You're gonna see the uh, magenta, which is kind of a dark pink. You're gonna see light blue, you're gonna see black, and you're gonna see yellow, depending on what color they're trying to produce on the card. Now I can move all over here and I can see that pattern of dots. This, by the way, is our fake card. So notice if I go down here to the name, Mantle, 
I see the black ink has dots in it, I see the yellow ink has dots in it. And that's gonna be a telltale sign that this is a fake card. If I decide to go to my other card, to my authentic card, okay, notice that the dots are a little bit different. The dots are wider apart because in the 1960s, they couldn't get as fine of a dot pattern on it. Also notice that the colors are slightly misaligned and that is normal, that's actually a good thing. The modern printing is going to have those dots very precisely aligned and you're not going to see this blur. This is very typical of what would happen in the 1950s and 1960s. What you'll notice now as I come down to the name, notice that the black ink is a pure black. There are no dots on there. The yellow ink is a pure yellow and you're going to see these very solid, solid colors on your authentic cards. Let me go back to my fake Mickey Mantle and go down to the letters down here, if I can get my lens to co coordinate. Notice that you see in the dots of that A, you see a whole bunch of other colors in there. And that's because they're using something called dithering, which is where you mix dots of two different colors to get something that looks really good, that looks really good, that the colors match. These colors are the exact same shade of yellow. The difference is, is that they had to change the dots on here to make sure that they match that exact same shade of yellow. I'm gonna to go to the back of the card because the back of the card is supposed to be these, this nice pink. This is typical, all the, 1950, all the 1969 Topps cards have this shade of pink. But again, I'm gonna look at it under this loop. Get that hair off my lens. I'm gonna look at it under this loop. And what I notice is, hey, those are dots. I see dots for the black ink, I see dots for the pink ink, because the pink ink is using a different shade of pink than where it was actually used on the authentic 1969 cards. Let me go to my authentic 1969 card over here, flip it over, take a look at that same section. Notice that the colors are sharp. Very precise black, very precise pink. You're not seeing any dots here. You're actually seeing more dots on my shirt than you're seeing on the card itself because it should be a solid pink, solid black, solid white. And the fact that they have to add so much ink to have these colors match is the way that you can tell that they're fake. That's probably the, uh, the most uh, telling thing that you can find. And I say that because just by using this flashlight, this flashlight is not going to necessarily tell you that the cards are authentic because if I'm dealing with a card that is older, if I'm dealing with an old reprint, then I'm not going to see that fluorescent. Now, for example, I've got a authentic Derek Jeter card and notice that it doesn't have that same glowy effect, which means these inks were not being used throughout Tops in 1993. So that means this reprint here was made after 1993. So I'm, I, I need to realize that. Um, of course, if I were to compare that to some other cards like this uh, 2004 Alex Rodriguez, notice that it has the same blinding bright light. So this uh, 94 card from Score has it. Uh, 89 Upper Deck has these inks in it because that was part of the uh, specialty. That's part of what makes these cards special, why they wanted people to buy them is because they were very crisp, they were very clean. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is that any of the uh, Topps uh, update set, so I've got an update John Cruck here. Notice that he's glowing very bright. If I take a look at his back, notice that very bright blinding light. Also, if you were to look at any of the uh, Tiffany sets from 1984 to 1989, uh, you're going to see that same brightness because they're using those higher quality inks and the higher quality paper. So that's a couple of tools that you can use at your disposal to see if your card is authentic. We're gonna continue this series. So this is just episode one. Uh, we're gonna do it with 1950s cards. We're gonna do it with 1930s cards. And we're gonna do it with tobacco era cards. Uh, just to kind of, uh, in general, talk about what things to look for because it's kind of important. Y'all take care.